Hello, everybody. Let me just get my shared screen up so you can see what we're all looking at. There we go. Hello. Whether it is the morning time, the afternoon, or the evening for you beautiful people, I am just so happy you could be joining me and my beautiful speakers today. Welcome to Triple Wheels monthly webinar series. This series is where we're going to be exploring hot topics and gather our industry experts to provide those in exclusive insights and tips from them. I am Erin Watt, Trip Wales Tech Partner Manager, and I will be your host for this exciting series on the world of AI. So I am thrilled to be here with everyone, but before we dive in, let's just get a little interactive. So I want everyone to drop a message in the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. I'm also, because I thought this would be fun, I'm going to publish a poll. So let's put this on here. See if everybody can do it. Let me know if everyone can see this. You should be able to also answer the questions below. Feeling that this is a great question to get the series start. You know, how relevant will AI be in your upcoming Black Friday, Cyber Monday strategies? It also really kind of helps get the conversation started in the chat as well, too, so that we can be really interactive with the speakers. I am also calling in from Toronto, Canada, where we are dealing with just a beautiful heat wave here. My hair is loving it. My dog's loving it. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you also are dealing with a really bad heat wave. We got Austin, Texas, which I'm sure is not cool. We got Nashville. We got NYC, but based in Paris today. Beautiful. Got Miami, Florida. I'm sure it's quite warm there as well. California. Oh, got so many people calling in from everywhere. I'm loving this. UK. How is weather in UK? Are we feeling hot? Is it muggy? Ontario. Okay. I love this. Down the 401. Hello to my fellow Canadian. Oh, it's sunny. Love it. I was in the UK once and it was cloudy. I kind of liked it though. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. We'll just wait a couple more seconds. Like I said, I put up a poll. Would love to get your answers on, you know, how relevant will the AI be in your upcoming Black Friday, Cyber Monday strategies? 90% it's cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I hear from Maryland. Hi, Dev. Thanks so much for coming. All right. So the poll is, it should still be up. I'm just going to hide the poll from the stage so that we can go. But on, on the side, like where you see the chat, the Q&A, there is like a little polls um, label where you can kind of go in and hopefully there's where you can answer everything. So like, please like throughout this answer, ask your questions. Um, we'll keep that going. Um, so hello and welcome again to anyone that is just tuning in now. And once again, thank you so much for joining us. So in this webinar series today, we are going to go beyond the buzzword of AI to bring together industry leaders who share, who will share their secrets and weapons for AI tools and provide you with some actual takeaways on how to use AIs that you can actually start implementing in your business today. So whether you're an experienced e-commerce expert, a newcomer to the industry, or a professional aiming to elevate your strategies, you will lead today with practical insights that will drive some remarkable results. I can promise you that. So today is jam-packed. We have some amazing speakers ready to share their insights on this hot topic of AI. So today, my beautiful friend and our fearless leader on the tech partnership team, Mia Healy, the director from Triple Whale will be joining us. And then we have the wonderful SJ Carcamo, Just Uno's senior partner manager, marketing manager, excuse me. And then next up, we have Revi's favorite lead merchant success manager, Matt Canfer. And I'm sure you've seen him many times before, our partner in crime, Michael Klonoff, the tech partner manager over at Gorgeous. And then saving the best for last, we have the beautiful Lisa Popop. Popovich, I'm so sorry, <laughs> the co-founder and CMO over at Sienna. So we understand here that 
work and kids or even your pets might demand your attention. So if you do miss any of the presentations or you need to rewatch because you couldn't take your notes fast enough, we are recording all the sessions and there, and we will actually be emailing them to everyone who signed up and also attended today's webinar. And that's not all. So at Triple Whale, we love to keep things exciting and we love to reward our active participations during our presentation. So our fabulous speakers have come together to provide some amazing giveaways for the most engaged audience members. So Triple Whale will be giving away a $100 Visa gift card. Gorgeous will be giving away third gen AirPods. Rebuy will be giving away a $75 gift card. Just Uno will be giving away a Sunny Life Pool Floaty, which I mean, I think we all need during this heat wave on the beach, nothing better. And Sienna will be giving away a $75 Bandit running gift card. Now, you're probably all asking, what does it even mean to be an engaged audience member? How can I get these gifts? It's so simple, engage. Engage in the chat, ask questions, network with your fellow attendees. I mean, I'm seeing the chat up late right now. Everyone's doing a perfect job already. We haven't even really begun. Or, you know, you can even send some emojis or even positive comments. So the more you're participating in the chat, the higher chances of winning these amazing giveaways at the end of each presentation. Okay, so, I mean, enough about me. I'm sure you all want to hear these incredible speakers that we have at our fingertips. So now that we went over a little bit of that housekeeping, let's get on to it and welcome our first speaker. Joining me on the stage, we have the wonderful SJ from Just Uno. SJ, welcome. Come on up. Hello, hello. Hello, lovely. So wanted to before I leave you and do let you do your thing, would you want to just get the your share your screen, make sure that we can yes. see everything? Own it, own it. Okay. Perfect. All right. The stage is yours. Okay. Thank you. I well, for one, thank you for having me. I was super excited to come speak about AI and just how we're relating it to on-site experience here at Just Juno. If you haven't heard about us, our whole game plan is to get you more conversions with pop-ups on your website, but not the annoying ones, the ones that are meant to give you more data, get someone to the next point, even if it's just like a micro engagement. We're there to hopefully get you a really quality conversion and in the long run, boost that retention effort and the returning visitor experience that you hope to have. So today I will get into some examples and I have an agenda for us to, to start off with. So we're talking all about AI product recommendations and how that's enhanced with the Just Do No tool. It is one of our feature sets and typically we have brands combining product recommendations with their lead capture strategies or just their general on-site strategy to conversion and those different flows that happen. So I'm going to get into algorithms for you, activating hotspots um, and segmentation. So all various uh, strategies, right, that we implement in email or SMS campaigns and in various channels. So I'm going to talk about how we see that applied to the website specifically. So part one, algorithms. What I'm serving up right now are the algorithms that you can pull from to, to serve on your website. And this is all pulling directly from your e-commerce platform. I'll just use Shopify as an example here. So with Shopify, you are feeding this algorithm, or I should say your customers are feeding it with all of their shopping experiences and how they're behaving on the website. And ideally, you're letting this run for at least 30 days, getting a good chunk of sessions in there to deliver something to work with. So if we were working together, I'm letting you know, OK, let's pick one or two that are really of interest. And then we're going to narrow it down here in the strategy part. So a lot to pull from. This one's a great one to screenshot just if you're needing like just different inspiration on what you can show. So part one here with algorithms is all about personalization. So the way that we're personalizing this product recommendation, which doesn't look like your typical carousel, right? It's definitely a little bit more designed. It's meant to be in a pop-up form um, or could definitely fit as an embedded part of your website. 
And the way that we personalize this is we're using same session cart data. And I can see that we're using this. This is a live example. I can see that we're using that here because of the products that are being recommended. This is based off of what that person had in their cart. And then we're also using historical data or that could be bundling information that we're using. But we're using data about past purchases to know, OK, if they purchase this, then X, Y, Z should go with that. And maybe as a brand, that's something maybe you would only know, like those nuances of what goes together. But typically you can rely on that algorithm. And then based off of what's being served up, you can curate something a little bit more custom like this in a pop-up form. And then this is also personalized because it's delivering a visual representation of what is being built here. So with this swing and, and this visual, you're not just getting something for someone to like go through products and then being more in like a product discovery phase. This is very much conversion driven to get that action and engagement to the next step of, OK, it's in your cart now. And that's a different type of product recommendation strategy that you can approach there. I'll show some more examples here of those algorithms applied. And what I want to highlight here is one, of course, the design is different, right? But all of these product recommendation carousels can fit anywhere on your website. It's really about testing out one placement, and then you can also test out different algorithms. So let's say you have someone coming from paid traffic and you're directing them to um, your beautiful homepage, for example. Maybe you wanna test out a different algorithm that is based more on an influencer put together package versus your most viewed products. So for you, you know, maybe there's an argument for any one of those algorithms to be shown, I'm sure. But when I run these tests with clients, we do see a difference, whether it be in clicks or conversions. And we let that data kind of tell us, OK, what what flow are they wanting to go down themselves? So some really awesome examples here of like we keep it simple, but on the back end, like we are trying to optimize and show the best curated products with a mix of like what the AI is serving and your human touch. I think that's a big component with AI in that conversation right now is just like where to input the human touch. So it's like you're not doing double the work, but enough of you is in that to make it not feel so robot, robot like AI like. Um, so here's another example when we're still in this algorithm phase of choosing our algorithms that you also don't just have to have that one algorithm in one place. This is an example from Jedco, our Justuno you know, client. And you can see they have this algorithm on the um, on the product page. And they also have it here in the slide out cart. So same algorithm. You can already tell like it's a different experience already because of what of the area that you're working with to actually show like in the slide out cart, you can only show one product on the product page. You can show more than three, more than four. So this also speaks to like that desktop and mobile experience with mobile. You don't have quite as much room per usual to work with. So being really strategic about that algorithm is important to make the most out of every click. And my goal with conversions is not only like to get you the conversions, but I really try to focus on same session conversions. So what can we do in that session right when we have their attention before the SMS goes out, before you even think about your email cart abandonment? Like what are we doing in real time to engage with them? So some awesome examples from Jetco. I'll check my time here. OK, cool. So part two of this in setting up product recommendations on your website in an enhanced way, kind of in that more part two advanced way is hitting on these reactive touch points. So depending on how visitors are behaving, we're showing them something in that moment. So again, real time. We have the welcome approach, or I should say the welcome moment. So when someone is first coming on your website, when they are exiting your website, whether it be just browsing, exiting, exiting from the cart page exactly when they're further down the funnel, or even after an add to cart action. So I'll share some examples here of what, what that can look like, because it doesn't mean just like showing them product recommendation carousel as you would everywhere else. This first one is an awesome example of something popping up when someone has arrived to your website or when they've added something to cart. And again, this could also be like you could argue this for any kind of strategy on the website. It's all about making it make sense with the copy that you're using. And then I think just that visual and how you're presenting it, whether it's like a pop up, a slide out, an embedded experience. 
And then if you continue on to this middle one, you see this actually starts with an intro screen and then it gets into the quiz and then later it would recommend products in the pop-up as well. So this is a good call out to that you don't have to wait to recommend a product till they're on a page or have scrolled a certain amount. I love those behavioral triggers, but this is a moment when we do have their, um, we do have their attention. And if anything, if they don't add it to cart, you still get that product discovery moment that gets to happen and they still get exposed to that. So hopefully whenever you're presenting your product recommendations later, or your value ads like that, that's a, that resonates a little bit more. You're not coming at it from a first um, time. And then this part three here with exiting browser, abandoning cart. I love this one because it, this one is triggered when they're just breaking that um, barrier on your website. And this one's combining it with an offer. So you can see it's a hundred dollars away from free shipping. Um, whenever someone is abandoning cart, maybe we have someone that's like a VIP -er that's aban abandoning versus a new visitor that's abandoning cart. And that will sway how aggressive you want to be with that incentive you give there or like how you combine that. So when we think about reactive, we also want to think about being proactive and proactive, meaning just like targeting those key pages, which is like every page, homepage, every shopping page homepage, category, your slide out cart, the post purchase pages should not be forgotten. And when you think about proactive here, yes, we've thought about like those main pages, but then what is the behavior like on those pages? Or like, what are we trying to prioritize on those pages where maybe product recommendations isn't the very first thing we want to show? I totally understand that. So then we we see that we would want to intro different variations of the product recommendation, whether it is something just a little more subtle versus something that stands out more. So I'll show some examples there. And I mentioned like if something is clicked specifically to open up a product recommendation, that is similar to like a scroll, all behavioral based and they're letting us know that. Here's an, I love this example from Native. They use just, you know, for their product recommendations on site. And this is not all of just, you know, this is a, a compilation of the different ways they're recommending products. And this is within like one page visit on their website. So it's one, it's different looks. And then two, it's just different types of products, categories, offers that they're all mixing together. So this is kind of thinking outside of the box of what you would typically think like, okay, product recommendations, X, Y, Z SKUs versus this is more like product recommendations, X, Y, Z algorithms, X, Y, Z being like category or um, like I love their shop hour picks, their internal picks. But this is a great call out to like in your testing, trying out different variations, trying out that different copy, and then allowing there to be enough placements for you to get that data behind that. So with those hotspots, I kind of touched on it just now, but what you're looking to edit are these elements here. So you have your algorithm that we're looking to pick. And then in the design studio, it's not about creating something that is like so custom, right? You're creating something from a template. You're able to adjust it here. You're adjusting for desktop and mobile with product recommendations too. Like you want to consider what would you want to show someone first in that product recommendation since you don't have all that real estate. And then you're deciding how to show this, whether it's an embedded element or a banner or a pop-up, this version of that native one that I showed is something that could be translated into either of those. So moving along here to the last part, we get into segmentation. So we segment everywhere else, hopefully, and we want to translate that segmentation to on-site. So here's an example of how you can either create a dynamic segment based off of different conditions that you want to apply. So who do you define as a VIP customer? Is that someone that spends over 500 and they're on your email list? That could vary per brand, right? So creating these different segments will also help you in determining maybe which algorithm you want to, want to use. So you can work either with algorithm or with the segments first. I, I've done it both ways. <laughs> So when we see it in action, it looks something like this, like when you finally have all your algorithms and your product recommendations on site, you've got a really nifty workflow to work from on the left here. So it's like, who's gonna even see this recommendation? That's our trigger. And then we've divvied this one into new versus return visitors. And then they see their two different designs. In this example, we're leading in with gathering more data, and then we have an intro screen. 
And both of those could just be directly and lead directly into the product recommendation. Or you could change one of those out to actually show the recommendations on the first screen, like an example we saw before. So once you have everything integrating and your first party is syncing through, we look at the data. And that's where I really want to encourage you to test because in the end, your data will tell you what is being engaged with and what is not. So very easily, you can turn something off and change your strategy, change placement. It's not something you want to go down a rabbit hole with, but there are indicators in like the, the click throughs, the add to carts, the sessions and the source data too, and where someone's coming from that will give you that direction. So this hopefully is encouragement that you'll be able to see it all when it comes to these types of product recommendations in our algorithms. And then also able to see and customize different dashboards so that you can feel like you're getting that full picture. I know I'm up on my time here, so I will wrap it up with a case study. I'll throw the link in the chat for us all, but this is kind of to see it all tied together where we do have a quiz prioritization, we have our urgency, we have an offer, and then we're inserting product recommendations and still yielding a lot of engagement post quiz. So your goal that I'll leave you with is to use AI product recommendations to deliver dynamic experiences to your top segments. So between five and 10, you know, starting off and then ramping up into the holidays and basis off of source and behavior. So source is really important to me when it comes to like your paid traffic and your email and SMS. Those should be different experiences when they would get back on site. And then behavior based is they're just telling us exactly what they want to see and what they don't want to see. So really lean into letting them tell you that with these experiences. And that's all for me, Erin. Oh, the presentation was too short. Go back. <laughs> I love this. I love also like just how interactive your presentations are. Like I find that I learned so much more and I couldn't agree more. Like it's, you know, you're talking about, you know, being able to like deliver these dynamic experiences to top segments and basing that on source and behavior. And it's so funny, like you're, you know, you mentioned what people are telling you, what they want and what they don't want, but yet we still don't really listen to those or we don't have the ways of collecting that data as well too. Um, and it's so important, especially like as we're strategizing for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So, I mean, these were amazing tips, um, especially, you know, ways of using AIs um, for product recommendations, your pop-ups, even getting more zero party data as well too. So this was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I do have, oh, we have a lot of questions. Um, we won't be able to get to all of them. Um, so Brent O'Brien wants to understand if there is a free trial. Yes, there is a free trial. I can definitely throw that in there and I'll throw the website in here too. And then with this QR code, there's a free conversion audit, which will also get you the free trial if you want to go into it, into the free trial with a little bit more action. Like, where do I look? What can I see? And also, I mean, Brian is just so interesting. So, so interesting, just Uno. So, also, is there an average increase in conversion rates when using Just Uno? I'm not sure if you have that information at your fingertips right now. Is there an average increase in conversion rates when using Just Uno? Um, for industry, I could give you something. I can give you a resource to look at. But I guess with Just Uno, we are industry agnostic. So not everyone is there for conversions. Mostly people or people may be there for lead capture and then how conversions relate to that. So just keeping that in mind that different ways to approach conversions, I can definitely share the industry info. Awesome. Yeah. Please put that in the chat and anything that we did miss, SJ will be sticking around um, and she can answer a couple of your questions before she heads out. But before we jump, we have this amazing $75 giveaway. Yeah. And let's do a little bit of a drum roll. I'm gonna have to give it to Brent. Brent, just like he was there, he's super interested in Just Uno, asked a couple yeah. questions. So we really appreciate your engagement and your interest. So the courtesy of Just Uno, you will be gifted a Sunny Life Pool floaty. So congratulations. Yes. All right, thanks again so much, Just Day. Thank you. All right, everyone, let's keep this rolling. So next on stage, we have Rebuy's favorite lead merchant success manager, Matt Canfer. Welcome to the stage, Matt. Thank you so much for having me. 
Why yeah, thank you. This is this is my first time working with you from Rebuy. I've gotten my pleasure of working with a couple other members, so it's really exciting to have you with us today. Yeah, we've got a great team that's fun to uh, to uh, present. So I'm happy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will give you a couple seconds just to get set up, make sure that we can see everything, hear everything, and then I'll let the stage be yours. Sounds good. One moment. All right. We looking good? Okay. Well, pleasure to meet everyone. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Matt. I'm the uh, one of many merchant success managers here at Rebuy. I've been with the team for about two and a half years. And actually, prior to that, I implemented Rebuy for the store that I was working on, found it to just be such an amazing tool that I figured they were up to something good over here. And I joined the team and have been meeting with merchants ever since. Um, so today, I'd love to show you um, AI in action, how we can balance the use of AI with some more, um, more catered uh, recommendations within uh, your online store to create an amazing personalized experience for your customers. So. Question for the audience to start things off. What do you think of when you hear the word personalization? I'll give everyone a second before I give my thoughts. Unique experiences, absolutely. Higher engagement, 100%. Um, so custom, yep, absolutely. Smart recommendations, more connected. Amazing. So one of my answers to this very broad question is that personalization in an e-commerce setting or a commerce setting is an experience optimization for your customers, for yourselves. And I like to use this analogy. Um, one of many uh, analogies that I use when I'm speaking with my merchants is recommending the right product to the right customer at the right time. So I often find myself in Trader Joe's, as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. I'm looking at pancakes in the freezer aisle, and then I think, oh my goodness, how's my stock of maple syrup? I have no idea, but the maple syrup's right here, I might as well just add it. Same thing when I'm looking at my frozen pastas, I'll add some grated Parmesan instead of having to go to that aisle and find that. So it's uh, curating a recommendation experience and the entire experience for your customers in an online setting um, to create a personalized experience. Why does any of this matter? Uh, Personalized websites are um, expected now by your customers. So 71% of consumers expect brands to deliver personalized shopping experiences. 67% of customers want to give um, want brands to give them relevant product recommendations. 78% of customers are more likely to repurchase from brands that personalize. So now more than ever, personalization is important. How can we leverage uh, the tools at our disposal to create that experience for our customers? Um, Rebuy's mission is to create smart shopping experiences to convert more customers, um, help customers discover and buy products that are right for them at the right time, and create experiences that delight and retain users. So we've got over 10,000 brands using Rebuy. You've probably seen us without even knowing that you've seen us, um, processing over a billion dollars in merchant revenue um, through our cross-sells and upsells, um, average of 30 to 50x ROI, tool really pays for itself within the first couple of days of using it. Um, with an average 5% AOV boost, we've seen brands blow that out of the water. So what do we solve and how do we solve it? The what do we solve um, is increasing AOV, increasing conversion, encouraging repeat orders, acquiring, retaining, um, and winning back subscribers. Um, we're able to do all of this through a really agile app. Um, does not uh, reduce load speed, um, but allows you to also be a lot more nimble than things that would otherwise have to be custom built, go through a development process, things like that. Where do we live in the e-commerce journey? Well, pretty much everywhere if you want. Um, so when we're thinking about how customers are coming to your site, we can think of the email, paid ads, organic, influencer traffic. How can we curate the experience that your uh, organic customers are having that are just discovering you, um, or if you know exactly where they are coming from, how can we differ those experiences from the homepage through search, collections, product page recommendations, cart and cart flyout, um, checkout through to post purchase order status, the customer account page, and then all the way back to the homepage. Um, so our mission is to create intelligent shopping experiences across the entire customer journey. 
To show this off, I'd love to highlight one of our um, best use cases. It really highlights a bunch of our different product suite. Um, so we work with Momofuku, and what they use us for is our smart cart. The smart cart is entirely um, built and owned by Rebine. Uh, we work with their amazing team, and they work with our amazing team to create an amazing experience for their customers. So what you can see here is our progress bar that is indicating and encouraging additions that would qualify someone for free shipping. Uh, this can also award free gifts. Ah. We can also understand what is in the cart and what isn't in the cart and make dynamic recommendations based on that. These can be driven through one of our many AI algorithms that's pairing recommended products based on previous order data or maybe similar similarities at the product level or collection level. And these can all be influenced by traffic source, by um, region, geolocation, um, and we can also recommend differently based on Clavio segment that the customer is in. So here you can see some of our most popular features, our cart, ah, again, um, our cart cross-sell that is dynamically populating language and recommendations based on what is in the cart. Um, and then this is one of our best features, our dynamic bundle. If we're on the product page for product A, we can bundle A with B, C, and D. So this is how we can leverage our recommended AI to create an amazing uh, shopping experience, but we can also get more granular and understand, okay, uh, we have seen gift with purchase be one of the most effective um, features for not only increasing AOV, but also increasing conversion rate. And this merchant wanted to run it specifically to different traffic sources. So we can pick up on where someone's coming from, give them an, a unique experience, maybe it's related to the ad or the email that they're coming from, encourage them to uh, add this free gift and qualify for it. Maybe it's based on URL and cart conditions. We can layer in different qualifiers to uh, award this. And what did this drive? Drum roll, please. So through this entire campaign, they found a 10% conversion uh, rate from this traffic source. Um, or these different traffic stores, over 14,000 customers were delighted with this gift uh, with purchase through these uh, paid uh, traffic sources. Um, and then you can see this is a little gift that is also showing some of our bonus features where we've got the smart cart with the cart recommendations, the free gift that is added based on their uh, dynamic traffic source. And then we can also cross sell um, within the checkout and the post purchase. So really increasing AOB, encouraging someone to maybe in the checkout break over a threshold that is going to qualify them for free shipping. Um, in the post-purchase, conversion is already captured. We can offer them a product that is added to that original order. And that is a very brief summary of uh, one of the amazing features that we have over at Rebuy. I will stop sharing my screen. Happy to take on any questions. Let's see. Maximum number of products you can show in a dynamic bundle. Do you recommend showing three to four products? It depends. I think the maximum for this widget is like 18 or something. Um, and maybe there's a use case to absolutely use 18 uh, product recommendations. Um, but I would say typical is in the three to four range. And that also can scale up and scale down dynamically based on, I only want this product to have one product that is added to it versus uh, this other product to have three products added to it. Um, these can be mapped to discount codes, also work with a very um, fair amount of merchants that are just using it to um, highlight products that go very nicely together at no discount. Um, both seem to work very well. Awesome. Well, we do, I mean, that was, a great presentation, short and sweet. So we do actually have a lot more time. Um, we do also uh, have, so Kunwar wants to understand, do you handle subscription products? Yes, absolutely. So um, we are not a subscription provider, though the name may uh, sound like we are. Um, we work with any uh, subscription provider. Um, Recharge has their, their um, old way of doing things with a duplicate product. Um, but then we also work with any subscription provider that is um, running on Shopify selling plans. We can upgrade from a one-time to a subscription in the cart. We can cross sell subscriptions within um, the, or any of our widgets can 
cross sell one time or subscription products. We can also um, integrate into the recharge customer portal and add one time products and curate those products within there um, and also reactivate uh, turn subscriptions through uh, recharge emails. Awesome. And Sean wants to know, are you working with luxury brands? Yes, I actually work with a fair amount of luxury brands. And I think it's always an interesting question that they come to us with, with, hey, we want to recommend products, but we want to obviously like do it in a way that doesn't cheapen the brand or we don't come off as great or salesy. And I, I think those are all the wrong words to be using. And I think there's also just a complete reframing of how we can think about these things. Post-purchase being uh, the main one, we've all probably seen a post-purchase. I have uh, opted into so many in, in my uh, browsing. And I think that's an opportunity where someone might say, oh, well, I don't want to like offer a steep discount on this, yada, yada, yada. Um, but luxury brands can use this as an opportunity to engage with an exclusive offer for a customer that just purchased with them. They just handed you their credit card and said, I want your product here. We can reward you. We can show you something that's coming from an upcoming collection that otherwise isn't available. We can show you an exclusive dis uh, like deal. You can become part of our member program if that's something that you work with. So uh, we seek to be one of the most integrated platforms. Any review provider, any um, any subscription provider, we, uh, we love to all work together. Yeah, and I feel with luxury brands too, um, these customers are tending to look for more of that white glove experience. So what they would expect going into a store, being very catered to. And I feel with a lot of like revised personalization options as well too, and making sure that the website, the product type, even the process is very personalized to that target audience. Um, so it's even better, if anything, for luxury brands to be working with Rebuy. Definitely. And just to rapid fire answer some of these last questions. Yeah, I know there's a lot. Yeah. People are coming in. <laughs> we have toggles to just filter out of stock products and also just filter out of stock variants from showing or do the opposite. If you did want to show these, usually it's elected to not show things that are out of stock. Um, dozens of different styling options for um, different screen sizes as well. So carousels or list or line views. Um, a lot of this can be um, be configured very easily by by your own teams and, and likely anyone on your team. Uh, it's a very intuitive platform, um, but we'd be happy to show you um, how to do any of that. Um, upsell more organic. Da, 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 da. I'm happy to answer these one off in the in the chat. As yeah, well. I was gonna. Say, I mean, we can, and there is also. Um, I'll just get to it because I know it's in another tab. Um, Ash did also want to know how does the typical buying journey look like. Um, I know that's also, uh, it's a big question also to be asking. Um, if that's easier to ask online, we can do that as well. But I thought I'd ask that too. I mean, I feel like you yeah. have a, a, a better understanding of that. Um, but I think what we're looking to do is just optimize the buying journey for as many of your customers as we can, presenting them with relevant recommendations at the right time, reducing the amount of clicks that it takes to find the products that you know all go together. I like to challenge any of you brand operators to give your phone to a stranger or uh, to your parent and say like, okay, find these three products on my site, you buy them all together. How many clicks would it take? Um, and how easily could that be uh, mitigated through the use of an intelligent recommendation engine like Rebuy? Awesome. Thank you. Well, I mean, I know there's a ton more questions. Everyone showed up at the end. So um, Matt, we would love you to stick by to answer a lot more of these questions, get interactive with the audience. But before we go, let's announce who is going to get Rebuy's $75 Visa gift card. So a little drum roll, please. And there were so many. So I'm just going to quickly go through. And we are going to go with Annika, congratulations. You are the lucky winner of the $75 gift card, courtesy of Rebuy. Thank you so much. And thanks again, Matt. Thank you. All right, let's continue going. And everyone, loving the engagement, loving the questions. This is exactly what we want to see. We also learn from one another. You know, sometimes our speakers put so much time into these beautiful presentations and, you know, there's so many questions that come from that presentation that can just also really enhance the presentation and the topics that we're talking about. 
And so you guys are just helping us also bring the knowledge to you and stuff that you're the most interested in as well. So keep this up. Um, we also have a ton more giveaways to give up. So keep talking, keep engaging. Now, for our next speaker, we have my good friend and my boss, uh, Mia Healy, the Director of Tech Partnerships over at Triple L. Welcome, Mia. Wow, I'm really close up right now. Hi, everyone. <laughs> That's, I'm like, like, why is the camera? This is not we are that. like uh, zoomed <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Mia. Super, super excited to have you. It's always wonderful to have the best come and present on behalf of Triple Oil. So thank oh my you for being here with us. I will let you take a moment to just share your screen, make sure that we can see everything. Beautiful. I'll get off stage. The stage is yours. Perfect. Thank you so much, love. Hello, everyone, all of you amazing, beautiful people. Thank you for joining today's session. I'm so excited to chat with you all today. Today, we are going to be talking about how AI and automation can streamline your data analytics. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's jump in. So a little bit about me, because who am I and why should you care about what I have to say? So like Erin said, my name is Mia Healy. I'm the Director of Tech Partnerships here at Triple Whale. I've been in the partnerships and e-com space for over six years now. I actually started managing partnerships on the brand side of things for a skincare and fitness brand. Um, and then I was really interested in what everyone was doing over here on the tech side. So I worked at a variety of different SaaS startups and fast forward to present day where I'm now with Triple Whale and I've been here for about two years now. I'm based in Orlando. And of Florida, where I've been for the past four years with my two cats, Lily and Dylan. Um, they are chilling in the background today. Uh, they love hanging out in my office. <laughs> so y'all will be able to see them throughout the presentation. Um, and lastly, I have so much admiration and respect for all of you founders, owners, and operators. It is not easy to build a brand, especially now. So I learn so much from all of you every single day. And honestly, that's why I love working in this industry. So just a little bit about Triple Whale for anyone who's not familiar. We really bring the metrics that matter most into one easy to use dashboard and tool. So we're really centralizing all of that data into one nice place for you. Um, this way you can make deci decisions with real-time data and make those data-backed decisions, um, power profitable growth with product and customer analytics, automated intelligence that detects anomalies, which we'll chat about today, and streamlining your ad performance, of course. And we work with tons and tons of Shopify and Shopify Plus brands, over 20,000. Um, some brands that y'all are probably familiar with, you'll see here like True Classic, Chamberlain Coffee, Olipop, Kosis, to name a few. Okay, let's get into the good stuff. The thing that we're all here to learn about today, how AI can transform your data analytics. So the first tip that I want to talk about is segmenting your customers and prospects to increase personalization. So segmentation really is personalization because the experience that you're providing for your prospects who have never made a purchase before really should be completely different than your VIP customers who are spending X amount of dollars with you annually. So you you really want to segment your customers honestly, based on whatever your business finds valuable. So this could be the type of product that they purchased. So then you can follow up and send them recommendations for new products to increase them to purchase again. Um, maybe you're segmenting by their birthday month so you can send rewards and gifts to them. So again, they can make that next purchase um, or uh, segmenting based on the ads that they have interacted with or have not interacted with is also really important. Um, and using a tool that can use AI to actually create pre-made segments for you will really help speed up this process. I cannot stress the importance of segmentation. Again, like I just said, that experience that you're providing, it really is not one size fits all. Um, you really do want to get quite granular with your segmentation, um, especially because personalization is so before, so important. I mean, just before we were all listing what say, what uh, personalization reminds us of, and a lot of us, you know, talked about how it's a unique experience, right? So you can't provide a unique experience to all of your customers because that's just the same, you know, that's the same experience across the board. In order to provide that unique experience, you really do have to segment your customers, and again, based on a variety of different fields. Um, uh, for whatever your business or your brand finds the most valuable. 
Our next tip is to analyze your cohorts of customers. So this is where you really want to dig into the data and conduct month-based acquisition cohort analysis. That's a mouthful. Um, so you really want to look at the customers that you've acquired over a particular time frame. Then you want to review their purchasing behavior. And with that data, you'll be able to map that back to the various marketing campaigns and initiatives that you are running at the start of their or at the time of their acquisition. So if you can do this analysis, you'll really be able to identify, OK, these marketing campaigns, these objectives that we were doing um, have led to our highest LTV customers and have led to our stickiest and most retained customers. So you'll really be able to run on almost a like rinse and repeat type of model um, where you can continue to run those cam uh, run those campaigns and run the most profitable profitable business for you, um, especially because now we know customer acquisition costs are rising, ad costs are rising. It is really expensive to acquire customers now, so you really want to focus on you know once that prospect does make a purchase and they become a customer, how can you keep them right? So learning that and learning how you can keep those customers is super important and keeping them coming back. And that's why segmentation is important to make sure you are providing them with a unique experience. And also you are aware of what campaigns were you running at that time? So you can continue to run those campaigns and continue to retain your customers. Tip number three, automate your internal internal reporting. This is one of those things where it's like, this is the best part of automation because automation and AI are the best for those mundane tasks that don't require any sort of like personalization. It's just like a task that you have to do that is just like super like mundane, doesn't really require much. So that's what's really beneficial about, you know, finding those things in your current workload that you can just make more efficient and automating your reporting is one of those things. So as we all know, accurate reporting is super, super integral to the part, like an integral part of your business. But obviously it's super annoying to do every single day, um, especially when done manually. So as much as you can try automating this process so that you do have more time to make more money and engage with your newest clients, you have more time to just be more efficient in your day to day. And then we have tip number four, using AI to create custom dashboards. So I wanted to throw this slide in here because Triple Will has kind of been like teasing a little bit here and there um, about one of our newest product features called Moby, which is our AI powered data analyst. So it's kind of like our version of chat GPT, if you will, where you can just write in you know a certain type of dashboard that you want a certain table that you want a data breakdown that you want um and Moby will provide it for you based on your own personal data. So this really allows you to unlock flexibility to just ask for the data that you need and build workflows to really accelerate your growth. So you can generate complex reports. You can easily build forecasts. You can get insights and personal recommendations and so much more. So this is one of those things, again, that can just take a ton of work off of your plate if you are someone on the marketing team who's responsible for generating some of these dashboards. Obviously, you want to know which of your campaigns are working, which are your top selling products, that kind of thing. Um, you need to be able to generate those dashboards and those reports, and Moby does it for you, which is great. <laughs> and tip number five, signal enrichment is key. So this is another recently released product of Triple Whales called Sonar, which is our version of signal enrichment. So Sonar really improves the quality, accuracy, and completeness of the data your ad platforms use to target customers. Sonar creates visibility for your marketing platforms, which is going to result in more customer touch points, um, higher performing campaigns, so you will never miss another conversion with Sonar. So by integrating pixel attribution and Sonar into one comprehensive product, this allows Triple Whale to really empower brands to make smarter decisions and reach way more customers with that enriched data. And right now, um, our Sonar product is currently supporting Meta and Klaviyo, but we we have so many channels in the works right now that we plan on rolling out soon. So here we are at our final takeaways, everyone. So just to sum everything up that we chatted about today, the first one, customer segmentation is an absolute must for increasing personalization at all customer stages. 
Two, analyze your customer cohorts to identify which marketing campaigns, objectives, efforts, et cetera, result in your highest CLTV customers. Three, automate your daily, weekly, monthly reporting. Get that mundane task off of your plate. Four, use AI to create custom dashboards, complex reporting, forecasts, and more. And then lastly, signal enrichment is a must for improving the quality, accuracy, and completeness of the data your ad platforms use to target your customers. So for anyone who is interested in exploring Triple Whale, we actually offer a 100% free product. It's called our Founders Dash. This is a really great way for brands to just get into the Triple Whale product, play around, connect some marketing channels, and see how Triple Whale can work for you. And that is all from me for today, everyone. Um, if y'all are interested in learning more about Triple Whale, you can go ahead and drop it in the chat and I'll reach out. Or you can always reach out to me at Mia at TripleWhale.com. But yeah, thank you so much for having me, everyone. Thank you, Mia. And no surprise, we have so many questions. And unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to all of them. But the beautiful Mia has allocated some time to stay back so yes. that she can interact with all of you and a lot of segmentation, which I'm not surprised. Segmentation is a huge conversation, especially on the topic of retention. So I think this is, you know, you'll have some great dive diving into this. Um, one of the questions I do have though, um, when we do have a couple seconds. So at what size should brands start considering to use a tool like Triple Whale? Even though I know we have like a free one, like is there a mm -hmm. size at a brand, you know, if they wanted to invest in a triple whale that they would want to actually consider to start start actually using it? Yeah. So I think the I think the beauty with triple whale is that you really can use it at any stage of your growth. I think um, because we have the free dashboard for any of those smaller businesses and we have some really incredible enterprise offerings as well if you're a hundred million plus brand. Um, but I think the sweet spot of where you should really start considering like a paid triple whale plan um, is if you are making over a million per year. Um, that's when you know you're starting to really see that growth. You know, you want to know where your customers are coming from. Like I said before, ad costs are rising, customer acquisition costs are rising. So you really need to make every marketing dollar count. And so if you're making over a million dollars a year, like you got a brand right there, like you've got, you've got a good brand that's growing. Um, pretty, pretty well right there. So that's when you should really start considering like more of a paid offering with triple well is what I'd say. And, um, we have a whole bunch of features that can really help you just accelerate your growth. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, it seems like there's a ton of options. It doesn't matter what size you are. Everyone can be using triple whale and what better time than to start than with a free analytics tool. So everyone get your phones out, scan this QR code. Now, before we jump, um, like I said, everyone, Mia is going to stay back to answer all your questions in the chat. Yes. So don't you worry. And uh, like I said, before we jump, we do have the hundred dollar gift card courtesy of triple whale. So love all of the questions in the chat. I'm just going to scroll really, really quickly to see who we got. And I have Adrian, Adrian Pabon, I'm going to say. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name. Yes, well. Adrian. I love that. We will get your $100 gift card um, sent over after this. So congratulations. Awesome. Thank you so much. Another wonderful presentation and even better questions that we're getting. So once again, everyone, thank you so much for being so interactive. And like I said, me is going to stick around. Now we have on stage my good friend and my partner in crime. You've probably seen him on all the Trip Whale webinars and at every event you could possibly imagine when it comes to the e-commerce space. I'm very excited to get on stage our friend, Michael Klonoff, the tech partner manager over at Gorgeous. Oh, look at him. Already already the presentation's on the screen, like a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making sure we're all good to go here. No, thanks, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no, of course. So we're good on time. No need to rush through things. You're great at with this. So, and like I said to everyone, please ask Michael all the questions that you have for Michael, for Gorgeous. He's here at your fingertips and I'll let you take the stage. Awesome. Well. Aaron, thanks for the lovely introduction. So nice to meet you all. And uh, hello from cloudy San Francisco, uh, California today. Um, Michael, tech partner manager uh, here at Gorgeous. 
a little bit about us if you've never heard of Gorgeous before. What is what does that mean? Even uh, we're the number one rated uh, help desk built specifically for e-commerce brands. We work with over 15,000 D2C brands, huge amount on Shopify, Magenta, Big Commerce, all the main platforms. We got offices all over the world to support everybody. And we're helping over 25,000 uh, support agents every day do what they got to do, which is answer all the kinds of questions coming in from every single angle imaginable. So to kind of touch a little bit more on, on Gorgeous specifically, you know, we help brands grow with AI powered customer experience. So what we do is we bring all the different channels a brand has into one place. You know, people are going to reach out on email. They're going to reach out on chat. They're going to SMS. They're going to call in. You know, you have to manage all these different inbound channels. We help create one customer profile that, that kind of ties into no matter how they're reaching out and fully integrated with all your favorite uh, apps, including everyone on this call here today. Uh, we have over 100 integrations um, on all the Shopify app ecosystem. And yeah, we, we help make things real quick. So what do we really do? We kind of cover three big areas on personalization. You know, we're a customer experience platform that we help automate support, centralize all those different channels, as I kind of referenced earlier, and make customer data accessible. But today we're going to focus on AI specifically and, and how do we help brands do that and what are some good best practices to have in place, especially now that we're we're uh, getting close to Black Friday and there's always things you can do to prepare. So uh, I think over 5,000 of our brands today, including some big names here, you know, Kith, Voxu, Glossier, they're, they're leveraging automation as part of their customer experience. And it really speaks to what customers want. So uh, I did see one little question here. Is Gorgeous AI fully integrated with Shopify now? Um, I guess there might be a little more to that question, uh, but I'd love to return to that. Um, we do have the deepest Shopify integration, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure, depending on the specific use case, but I'll send you a note um, afterward here. But to kind of tie in you know, to this and to Shopify, right? What do customers want is the biggest question. And um, to kind of frame how AI fits into all this, you really have to understand what people want um, to best prepare for how to implement revenue generating tactics. So customers at the end of the day, they want to be surprised. They want to be delighted. They want it to be easy to find the answers they're looking for, you know, a quick first response time. And they want a reason to come back to your brand. Like essentially when you boil it all down, that's the optimal customer experience. And in order to do that, you really need to like meet customers where they are. As I mentioned earlier, there's all these different places where they're going to reach out. And it's hard as a brand to control that because people are just naturally going to choose the most frictionless path for them. Maybe it's an Instagram DM, right? Hey, does this come in red? Um, maybe it's, you know, a call or an SMS, right? But making sure you're ready to receive all those questions and make those actionable uh, to, you know, turn them into sales and turn them into good experiences is really, really key. And that's what we call like the bandwidth challenge. How do you centralize those things? It's easy. You can do that with Gorgeous. So understanding like how you can help customers is also really, really important because um, you want to provide proactive support, not just reactive support and respond to things as quickly as possible. So there's a, you might be thinking, hmm, how, how long does it take me right now to get back to a customer question? There's ways to do that in under two minutes today uh, using something like Gorgeous and AI is part of that and automation is part of that. So I thought this was a really, really interesting statistic here. 80% of shoppers are more likely to buy when given a personalized experience. I think that ties into what Rebuy is doing, right? And another part of that is 90% of customers rate an immediate response as important or very important when they have customer service questions. So everything's really multi-layered here. How do you you know, be very personalized while at the same time answering things really, really quickly. And the answer to that is AI, right? The AI era is here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what does that mean and how are we doing some of that today? So my my hot takes here on, on the AI future, right? Uh, hopefully in 10 years, I'm not <laughs> vindicated for this, but, you know, 
pretty much what's happening is uh, the cost of, of cognition is moving down to pretty much nothing. And AI native companies are, are being, you know, created today, as opposed to you know, the old, you know, 2000s age of internet. And what we're going to start seeing is, you know, becoming digital native, that's already in place, that's table stakes. But then as we move forward, it's imperative to become AI native. And what, 2030, that's only a few years away, like, what are we going to see then? It's important to kind of recognize like where the industry is now. Um, we're, we're seeing a real shift in customer support, human labor dropping, which presents a huge opportunity for businesses today. A couple of really, really interesting like examples was like Klarna, right? They uh, embraced AI and saved a ton of money every year by automating their CX using AI. I'm not gonna go through all these points, but just wanted to highlight you know, this as an example. Um, but the real shift is coming, which is no longer is it is the workday for support agents going to primarily be about answering like individual questions, especially if they're common and repetitive. But it's actually going to change to coaching an AI model to you know be more in your brand name. Um, it's going to be able to respond to those basic tickets for you, earning back time for those team members to handle like escalations other projects, maybe you know, website updates, warehouse management, logistics, all these things that have been deprioritized up until now. And it'll also open up for really important aspects of the business, like becoming expert cross sellers and upsellers, right? Now that this has been handled and it can continue to be handled, the horizons are much greater, right? So let's get specific on how things kind of actually work. You need a platform in general that delivers data to your AI. So someone that can connect your knowledge base, you know, Shopify and your internal policies, thinking, you know, returns exchanges, all those kind of questions. You want it to resolve those in a system that lets you do QA on that. So those three needs inform our like three pronged approach here. So it's got to be great at learning your policies, processes and brand voice. Uh, it's got to use that learning to resolve tickets accurately and on brand in your voice. And then you have to have the ability to review those interactions, coach the AI and continually improve over time. So your training is going to make that AI stronger and stronger until it's going to become your top performing agent. So one of the things that we're doing today is we're helping brands create uh, an AI generated help center. So it'll study all of your common questions, and interactions and create help center articles out of that. And then the AI can, reference those help center articles to answer questions. And it's like constantly updating. So that's like layer one. And AI agent is gonna be able to resolve those questions, right? When they ask it, it'll send a personalized answer back based off of those in brand voice. And then it can also, what's really, really interesting is uh, perform relevant actions or handoff to the team. So actions here, what do I mean by that? You know, canceling, modifying orders, right? Uh, like with loop return as an example, or, or with recharge, right? Subscription related questions, right? These are these are actions that can be taken with the help of AI. And then it can, if, if, it, if it is something maybe a bit more uh, heavy lift, you can hand that off to a real person, to an agent to handle that. Right now, we're able to automate like 30% of, of emails for brands, and we're soon gonna be launching um, automations in the same capacity using generative AI for chat. And lastly, uh, you're gonna wanna be able to measure CSAT using AI. So observe it, grade those interactions, say they're good or bad and improve that over time. So what does it kind of look like? Um, here's an example of somebody writing in, the AI sending a personalized response and then being able to review and coach that model at, you know, after the resolution comes through to make sure that's what you want it to keep doing. So it's basically gonna be an extension of your CX team. You onboard it. You start automating, you observe it and you coach it. And it's just like a you know, constant cycle there. What are the results people are seeing? Well, 36% uh, increase in repeat purchases, huge reduction in uh, first response time, tying back to that really important statistic uh, from HubSpot I referenced earlier. And then 52% reduction in resolution time. You know, that's, that's not even just first answer. That's actually solving whatever questions coming in. And that also reduces the total number of back and forths on that whole thread. So it's just really streamlining things. 
And uh, a team that might have four or five agents is really going to have immense firepower when equipped properly. So there's a few brands here I wanted to highlight. Um, you know, basically they're scaling their support efficiently, reducing their volume, delighting those customers, and really being able to spend more time on those high impact activities. Um, so a couple of brands that are doing this today with us, Topicals, they're, they're able to boost sales through pre-sales customer conversations. They're automating all these common things, identifying uh, language and indicators, tagging those accordingly and you know escalating it to the right folks, making sure they can answer those. We also have, uh, <laughs> I always mispronounce, I think it's Shinesty or Shinesty. Um, they're automating, I think, half of their, their tickets today um, and using only five agents where they used to have 20. So kind of overall, the change is here. It's happening today. Um, and overall, you're going to want to make sure you're surprising and delighting. You're making it easy for people to find things and give them a reason to come back. And you can use AI to do that. And I know there were a bunch of questions. Um, if you did want to set up any time to chat, uh, feel free to either send me an email or scan this little handy dandy QR code. I didn't get a dinosaur on there. I'm, I'm really jealous on that one, Mia. But uh, yeah, thank you guys. We are going to have to do a whole little like fireside chat with you just with all the questions that came up. People are people are buzzing when it comes to AI and CS. Um, this one isn't really a question. I mean, like there's so many, like you are definitely going to have to stick back and like have a full blown <laughs> conversation with everyone, which I know oh. you'll <laughs> but um, this one I just kind of got really interested. Like Flora um, really was very interactive during your and really engaging during your presentation. And I just wanted to really highlight two of the comments because I thought they were really interesting. One of them was saying just, I think using AI successfully depends on the type of brand. And then also the comment that it's harder to use for higher end VIP style CS. Just wanted to kind of also get your thoughts on this because I'm sure Laura's not the only individual that feels this way and can also feel that maybe there is an increased chance of pissing off some of those higher end clients, not being able to meet expectations. Um, and then also even the thought process of that, you know, only these brands can be successful using AI and I'm just not one of those. What, what are your thoughts on all of this? Yeah, I, I scrolled up to take a look at Flora, your question here. You know, what are your thoughts on being transparent with customers about using AI? Right. I think it's really, really important. Um, I, I'm, I believe what we do today is we actually denote in a response that this was from an AI agent. Like this, you know, this response was uh, generated from AI. But I think going back to that other comment of like, you know, high high touch brands, really, you know, upmarket um, types of brands who are trying to implement AI and where and how to do it. I think that's really, really key where and how you do it. If there is a, if there is a type of interaction where it does require human touch, perfect. Like the whole point of using stuff like this is to deflect your most common types of questions. Like where's my order um, or routing people to the right resources and documents so that you can free up time when those high, you know, high empathy types of questions do come in, really high personalization, you know, maybe even, you know, setting up a call with somebody, those should be reserved for your top agents. Mm -hmm. But we're, what we're talking about primarily using it for here is the rest of things where it really doesn't require, you know, to pull a tracking number automatically, again, you can drive people to self-service as much as possible, but at the end of the day, if they choose to write in, being able to respond to that email in like, you know, a minute flat and get them the information they need is going to provide a really good experience. I think uh, I have an example of I actually, I ordered a backpack online, then found out it was out of stock, went to, and they're, they're actually a gorgeous customer. I went to the chat, said, hey, I didn't get a tracking number. Do you know what's happening? immediately they were able to respond and say, yeah, actually uh, looks like it is out of stock, but we have this color and this color. Just let me know if you'd like to get that. Super easy to do. Didn't have to call in, do anything at all. Um, mm -hmm. it, I think if that was still done through through AI, it's, you know, it's absolutely solving the issue. 
Um, but yeah, happy to chat like in more detail if, if any other like specifics on that. Yeah, I mean, all really great points. And I mean, listen, my bank account might not look like I'm a high end customer, but I spend like one. And I also have, you know, I because there's so many options online, I do look for the top notch customer service. And sometimes it's not even just, you know, having you know, all this personalization and this creating, it's just also the convenience and having the answers there for me and me not feeling like I have to look for everything. Or if I can't find something, at least provide me with the option that I can type something in and boom, there's the answer. Like my chat GPT, it's my best friend. It answers all my questions. Like it's going to provide me with what I need in that moment. And so, yeah, I definitely agree. Like when those really difficult questions or you know, those more detailed questions come up, have those top agents there to address those where kind of like that, I think Flora just said, even said it like the level one agent, that's where your AI is going to really come in place. Um, so I do have, I need, I do have one more question. Um, Kunwar also reached out personally asked, wanted me to make sure that I asked you this. So, and Kunwar, if you just want to also just let us know, I want to make sure that I'm asking this question, right? So um, they were wondering about pre-sale support so like asking questions about product reviews facts upsell um and driving sales right away so i'm assuming when you say driving sales right away is that by having the pre-sale support that that's going to help drive sales right away just want to make sure that i'm asking the question correctly oh with the ai agent yeah yeah so uh in Kumar, feel free to you know add some uh you know color into the chat but i think from from what i'm understanding um, using, you know, AI agent, you can set, you know, conditions and flows. Like, for example, if customer mentions this, then, you know, uh, reference this article or hand off to a, to a salesperson. So you're ba you're able to more quickly identify maybe those, like those hot leads that are coming in, like, Hey, I, I'm really trying to buy this right now, but it's not working, right? Using AI to flag those out of potentially the many hundreds and thousands of tickets that a brand gets a day and escalate that to to someone who is on the sales team is also a huge advantage right it's not always about having ai answer the question but also you can automatically tag tickets right and when you when you start zooming out tagging tickets and customer sentiment and then being able to combine that with other really powerful tools like triple whale right understanding hey over this past quarter, these tended to be the, the most frequent and busy times. Maybe we need to staff more agents at that so they can handle more sales questions. Or maybe, oh, we were getting a lot of questions on, does uh, this t-shirt go with this pants? Maybe we need to leverage rebuy uh, for our agents so they can recommend better products right in line with their view, right? And using all these integrations together to really provide that personalized customer experience quickly and then being able to make better business decisions at the end of the day. Yeah, no, 100%. And you're right. Like at the end of the day, you can have this amazing tool, but it's also how the tool works with the rest of your tech stack. Um, so I couldn't agree more. Um, thank you again, Michael, for the presentation, for taking the time to answer some questions. We still have so many more questions. So if you do have time, I know that you're busy going to the next event, but if you did have a couple seconds, we'd love you to stick back and interact with the with the audience. Uh, now for the amazing prize of the third gen AirPods. And I mean, I I don't even have to scroll. Flora was just so interactive during the gorgeous presentation with all the comments and the questions. Um, so Flora, congratulations. We are going to be sending you over those AirPod third gens um, and we'll make sure to take down your information. So thank you so much. Congrats, Flora, and thank you guys so much. If you want to ask any other questions, I pop my email and LinkedIn in the chat as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you again, Michael. It's always a pleasure. All right, guys, like we are already nearing the end of this webinar. Like it's true when you're having a good time, time just flies. So once again, just thank you for everyone's with their participation, their engagement. Um, Honestly, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you again. And next on stage, we are saving the best for last. Uh, please, everyone, give a, well more, a warm welcome to the lovely Lisa, 
the co-founder and CMO over at Sienna. So please, everyone, welcome Lisa to the stage. Hi, Lisa, welcome. This is so close. <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out how to zoom out. All these streaming um, I know. are so weird. I but, know. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Um, I know I just the whole time I'm like, wow, everyone can really see me. So, <laughs> but don't it's worry, so funny. people will be paying pre uh, attention to your presentation. So, and Amazing. awesome. All right. We have it up. We are ready to go. And Lisa, I'll let you take the stage. All right. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here uh, to um, just share some of the innovations in the e-com space, uh, I love all the tools and uh, features and innovations that we've seen in this webinar, um, and I love this space. So my goal for today is just introducing you to what is possible in customer experience and um, what it's like to have an AI agent into your team. So I'm going to share a little bit about Sienna, what we do, who she is. She is a she, yes. She's a kind of like a real person. And then I'm going to show you some examples and more than happy to answer any questions. Um, a little bit about me. I am Lisa. I'm the co-founder of CMO at Sienna. I'm a second time founder. I've been in e-commerce for nine years, I believe now. I actually started as a Shopify merchant as well. I was running my own brands and then naturally transitioned towards building software for e-commerce just because of uh, I just felt that a lot of the pain points that I was going through, just, just, they just needed some solutions. So um, that's how the urge to start building software came. And uh, I've been in the conversational commerce space since I started building for e-commerce and the Shopify space. Uh, fun fact about me, I actually studied med school for six years, but then I pivoted towards tech. I love acai bowls and I'm obsessed with my King Charles Cavalier. So if you have dogs, you probably know what it's like <laughs> uh, and you can definitely connect with me on social. All right, a little bit about Sienna. So what is Sienna is the first omni-channel empathic AI agent that helps brands automate their customer experience across all channels and languages with uh, zero human supervision. Um, some of the fastest growing brands trust Sienna. So we literally launched a year and a half ago and we've been growing like crazy, working with dozens of brands like Eight Sleep, Cottery, Hexclad, Momentous Supplements across different kinds of categories. Um, and Sienna joined their team as their new agent that works alongside the other team members and just start uh, responding and engaging to customers to various use cases that I'll be walking you through um, in, in this uh, presentation. Uh, some of the results our customers are seeing. So obviously CSAT is something that everyone is looking at. It's one of the most important metrics. So Sienna actually has a very, very high CSAT and our goal obviously to, is to get it towards five uh, and then faster resolution times. And also it converts tickets. Um, so it actually answers uh, one of the questions that I've seen in the chat and I'll chat a little bit more about, uh, about the sales aspect and I can also respond to you there. Um, okay. But basically what I want to start with is going a little bit backwards and, uh, starting from, uh, the fascinating evolution of customer experience over the past few decades. So in the 1990s, we, we entered the context center era and this period really saw a rise in uh, centralized customer support with companies like Avaya, Genesis, they were leading the charge. And for the first time, businesses could actually um, manage high volumes of customer interactions in one place. Around 2010, we transitioned towards help desk, uh, which, you know, just introduced a whole new era. Uh, and as digital channels started to pop up, platforms like Zendesk, Salesforce, uh, they just emerged and these tools really allow businesses to handle customer inquiries uh, across multiple touch points from email to phone to social media. But now we are really at an inflection point. It's literally the same when the internet came to be, when the iPhone came to be, we are literally at a reflection point and uh, it's basically the autonomous CX era. And this really represents a significant shift in how businesses interact with customers. And AI agents are really becoming capable of handling really complex queries. And it's just a matter of months until 
these agents will be smarter and smarter, will be able to tackle more and more. Um, and learning from each interaction, learning from humans, and really providing personalized support at scale. So this evolution really reflects broader uh, technological trends and changing customer expectations. So from the centralized phone support to omni-channel assistance, um, now to AI-driven experiences, really each era has brought new capabilities and challenges. So as we move into this new era, my takeaway here is to really consider how AI can enhance rather than replace human interaction and how it might reshape your customer experience landscape in the years to come. Also, we know that most of the challenges that we're facing today uh, are about fragmenting operations that lead to poor CX and inefficiencies. Maintaining a unified brand voice is pretty challenging, especially keeping that brand voice consistent across channels and providing the, the same quality of interactions every single time. Um, you know, human agents really are doing so many things, like it's just, they're overwhelmed. They, they have so many things to tackle. And obviously as humans, we can only do so much and we all also go through moods and like, you know, we're not always able to be at our peak performance every time. And also uh, with the introduction of more and more AI tools, we're seeing a lot of generic AI agents that lack that depth of integration workflow and specialized knowledge. So it's really important to recognize that CX is one of the most intimate and high stakes communication channels and we really need to uh, realize that humans really play a crucial role and uh, it's beyond just answering tickets and also um, they embody the brand, handle complex situation, provide empathy that's challenging to replicate. So really what AI offers is potential uh, solutions and really um, an enhancement of everything that's been done in a traditional fashion so far. So I want to dive into, you know, okay, we've talked about a little bit of history and the challenges. So what is the solution here? And uh, I will just introduce uh, to you Sienna. So basically the three main pillars that Sienna is focused on is being your omni-channel embedded agent, um, being your empathic agent in the sense that it will really embody everything that you stand for as a brand. And I'll share how it really can replicate your brand, your voice, your tone, your personality across multiple channels and how modular and customizable it can be. And also being an autonomous agent that is focused on end-to-end -end resolution. So one of the biggest differentiators is the fact that with CNI, you can really have an end-to-end -end flow being taken care of, including those actions, those, tra those transactions with no human intervention. And yes, these are some of the channels that CNI is available uh, to work um, on today. So how does it actually work? Um, so Tiena is a platform agnostic uh, solution, meaning that it takes a seat into your help desk. So whatever help desk you might use, we're really good partners with Gorgeous, which recently shared their solution. So for example, Tiena might take a seat inside of Gorgeous and starts working with your team and start tackling tickets as soon as you enable it to. You know, you can upload documents, files, you can build automations, just instructing Sienna on how it should go about um, tackling the specific use case. So for example, if it's something about returns or if it's a, you know, a complaint about a damaged item, you just train Sienna the same way that you would train your agents using natural language, plain English, Literally, you know, as if you're talking to ChatGPT and you just tell it how to how to tackle that scenario and then he will fully autonomously go ahead and take care of those use cases. Uh, so it's really embedded into your operations. It's, it works very, very um, seamlessly with the team. Every time CNI is not capable of answering a specific ticket or it might have a knowledge gap, uh, it, it has that seamless routing experience to go uh, into the main uh, inbox uh, where all the tickets live and we'll keep the ticket open and your uh, another team member can pick it up. The most important thing that everyone cares about it, I'm speaking with like dozens of, of brands every single uh, every single month and uh, I know the brand element is one of the biggest concerns. So how do you make sure you really keep that tone voice, everything that you've built for years, everything that you stand for, so one of the coolest things with Sienna is you can really design 
the way um, this agent interacts and shows up in, in those conversations. So what you can do is you can um, actually have here a screenshot with our Persona Studio. You can create a specific agent for each channel and deploy it accordingly. So let's say, for example, we have here Victoria. Victoria is the main, um, the main agent for chat. And we know, for example, we, we've chosen a real name, right? So I've seen that question, like, should you disclose that you're using AI or not? It's really up to you. There's no like regulation uh, that uh, is, uh, is in place at the moment. So it's totally up to you. Most of CNS customers do not disclose it because customers cannot really tell uh, when they're speaking with AI. They really think it's CNI is a real person. Uh, we see that in the in the reviews. And what you can really do is um, go very granular here. So really provide context about the business. So it's like onboarding the real member, right? So let's say you just hired someone, you have like that one-to-one -one training session with them. You really want to tell them everything there is to know about the company, everything that you stand for, your target demographic, your um maybe some customer service uh policies everything that you know an agent should know as cnr should also know so you can drop that in the context it, there's a context box if we scroll here then we have an attribute so you know let's say if your brand was a real person how would that person look like how would that what would be their personality trait so you can add you know we recommend usually four to five attributes and then you have instructions so you can really go very granular here and provide the do's and don'ts that you know, should always follow. So basically, this is the way that you can really bring this AI agent to life and make it part of the team and the company. And therefore, Victoria, after we've, uh, we've really trained it here and we've customized it, Victoria will know exactly who she represents and who she's speaking with. And you can do this for every single channel individually. So we can have someone like Victoria that's very, you know, um, educational um in health and wellness uh for email but then we can have like john that's very sassy likes to crack a joke or two on social media or uh, sms so it's uh it's very customizable okay so another very important uh you know topic for discussion when it comes to ai agents you want to make sure uh, they are very user friendly, customizable. They have that modularity, right? Because there's no uh, one, one size fits all. Every single business is different. Even if you know you are are talking to ten different ten uh, ten beauty brands, you might think, oh, they are in the same category. They have the same type of products or policies. It's actually not like that. They are completely different. So that's where you know having like a solution that is very modular, flexible, and customizable that can work with your own policies and workflows is extremely important when it comes to um, embracing and uh, adopting AI agents. So we have a bunch of uh, features that really allow for continuous improvement and learning for Sienna, including learning from your best agents. And um, also the way Sienna was, uh, was built is really like a human. So what we did is we looked at, okay, how does the ideal customer experience look like? How do humans operate today and work backwards from that? Uh, so it's really trained like a human. You train it like a human. It has, is that, it has that um, reasoning capability and decision-making to understand, okay, um, if a customer reaches out and they want to cancel, maybe I should first find out why they want to cancel. And based on the reason I can I have different routes that I need to take, right? So it will not immediately be triggered by a keyword, which is cancellation, but it will actually dive deeper, ask clarifying questions, and then take the right course of action. So it's actually super advanced. Um, optimized for resolution, obviously, we don't really want uh, tickets that are deflected. We actually want these AI agents to solve problems and leave customers satisfied and happy. Uh, it has that contextual human understanding, so it's, you know, compared to like the old chatbots of the world, it doesn't rely on keywords or it doesn't have that structure of having to build, uh, you know, those uh, rule-based automations and uh, workflows yourself. Everything is no code, no workflow. Uh, every single response and uh, conversation that Sienna has will be unique and dynamic, so it doesn't rely on macros. You don't really even need to think about creating the perfect response, you just need to instruct, hey, when it comes to returns, this is what you need to do. When it comes to, I don't know, exchanges, this is what you need to do. 
And then, yeah, it has that continuous learning component and it really works across all languages with no um, training required. So if I reach out today asking something in French for, you know, on Kitsch Cosmetics, I will receive a response in French. You can do a lot of advanced workflows. So if you are a company that really has, maybe even you have a separate order management system and not, not everything lives inside of Shopify, you can do that with Sienna. If you have, you know, a returns um, process, you might be using Loop, you can integrate that with Sienna and automate your returns process. Also, if you uh, are, um, are, um, subscription uh, based business, you can integrate with the most popular uh, subscription tools. We have Kio Recharge, Stay, Order Groove, Smarter, and you can automate your subscription management. So literally everything that your subscribers can do in their portal, C and I can do it for them and really provide a seamless, unique experience for the end customer. Um, I'll just jump. We have so many things. I don't want to overwhelm you. Integrations, super easy to, to plug them in, literally takes a few, a few uh, seconds to integrate uh, the majority of the partners that we, that we have. And it really allows for those advanced customized um, automations. And what I want to show you is actually um, some examples from one of our customers. Let me see if I can share again my screen. Uh, I want to show you this conversation that I had with uh, with the Lofty agent, which is Sienna. Um, so it, it basically it was a continuation of what I started in June. But today I just asked Sienna, hey, how are you? And Sienna has that conversational aspect going beyond just support inquiries. It's actually, you can even tell it to, you know, hey, tell me a joke about clocks or about whatever, about sleep. Uh, so I had a really fun inquiry. I asked about returns as well, and then Sienna responded. Um, and I asked about subscriptions, how do these work? And then Sienna responded. So it's super conversation. It really feels like you're speaking with a real person and yeah, give it, give it a try yourself as well. Uh, I know we are on time here, so I don't wanna um, keep this for much longer. I'll just go back to my presentation. Okay. And we have some case studies, more than happy. I mean, you can find them on our website as well. More than happy to share this uh, slide with uh, these slides with anyone. Uh, but yeah, Peach has, um, has, has killed tremendously using Sienna. They were actually one of our first customers from last year. Uh, and they are seeing incredible um, results, same as Bandit. Um, they reached, I believe, 43% um, automation rate in the first month of using Sienna, and she has an incredible CPAT score. So everyone loves loves the new uh, the new colleague that they have. Uh, every day, those is automating the majority of their social media with Sienna. Uh, so it's really really cool to see how businesses, uh, early adopters are really embracing and like the results they're experiencing and how even things have changed um, for uh, for the teams themselves and what um, what that allow, what embracing and adopting an AI agent actually allows teams to do that they weren't able before because of lack of bandwidth. Okay, so my, um, my, my takeaways before I share uh, what I would recommend you to start with if you haven't yet adopted AI is, so if we take everything that I've talked about, because it was a lot, I would say you need to embrace AI with literally no fear or concerns uh, because you can really have a controlled rollout and you can learn along the way and just make sure you embrace a solution that allows you to maintain that human touch where it matters the most. Also prioritize solutions that offer advanced customization and modularity to fit your new brand and, and workflows. And then last but not least, you should just focus on creating that unified, holistic, uh, empathic brand voice across multiple channels. So uh, last up here, we recently launched uh, the first uh, AI certification program for CX leaders and operators uh, in e-commerce. So 
um, if you if you really are interested in um, getting more knowledgeable and uh, adopting this uh, solution for for your business, I would highly encourage you to scan this QR code and um, apply to get certified. I will absolutely uh, get you access to it, uh, especially that uh, because you joined this um, this um, event with us. And uh, if you have any other questions, you know where to find me. Thank you. That was such a good presentation. There's so much I took away from that. And I mean, from the questions that we got in the audience, so did everybody else. Like there's another, we need to have another fireside chat just with you in the audience because there's so many questions. I did because I think the Sienna certified um, is incredible. I mean, if we go into the polls, you know, just back to the question that we had, it's like how relevant will AI be in your upcoming Black Friday or Money strategies? You know, there's a lot of people that's highly relevant, somewhat relevant, neutral, but it is showing that AI is important. But I think sometimes even people that think it's highly relevant or even somewhat like there is still that that feeling of like, but how do I get the most out of it? And a program like this will really make a lot of brands and professionals feel that much more empowered using, you know, an AI power tool like Sienna. And actually, I went I wanted to go and check it out. I don't know if it's working for anybody else, but just um, I wasn't able to get the QR code working because I thought this was just so cool. I was trying to look at it myself. Um, so just in case, I don't know, is it working for everybody else? I just want to make sure that we put the link at least in the chat so that um, anyone that's interested is still able to sign up with you for the certification. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um Thank you so, so much. Yes, perfect. Okay. Thank so you. we do have a ton of questions and we still have some time. So I don't even know where to start, but let's just, um, I'll scroll back up. Um, okay. So um, Abigail was wondering how smooth is the transition between Sienna responding and customer service taking over in the chat? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So uh, we actually don't, uh, have that, oh, let me transition you to a human uh, kind of experience because we want it to feel like it's from a human to another human. So if Sienna doesn't know or has a knowledge gap, she will just say, oh, let me bring in my colleague and we'll get back to you ASAP. Uh, and basically the other agent will just step in and continue the conversation. So everything is seamless. It's not like, oh, you should email us here or there's a you know disruption in the actual flow. Okay, you can yeah. also customize the way it routes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And I like that, right? Like I, there is, I mean, if AI is able to do everything for me and I think I'm talking to a human, I don't need to be transferred to somebody else. Like I want to talk to Sassy John. <laughs> I love that example yeah. you gave. Um, and then how well is Sienna in configuring with editing and order? Um, so because we integrate with Shopify, all of those flows are built in the backend. So for you, it will literally be just two clicks we also have templates pre-built templates so for example we have the wisma the where is my order pre-built template that has already the context the instructions and the flow like the actual action from shopify of retrieving the order information built in so you only need to click twice and you can literally set it live um, so it's extremely fast and easy okay wonderful and then Kunwar also, I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a, it's a longer question, um, but one of them I thought was really interesting is how does Sienna remember users across different channels? And he's thinking more about like messaging history. So would Sienna be able to pick up that they previously talked to this user about X, you know, situation, or if this is a new conversation? So what does that look like for, with Sienna? Yeah, great question. Uh, so Sienna has the memory and context of the entire ticket. So let's say someone has reached out on email and then they reached out on chat. As long as we have their email address, those tickets will be merged and you know, we'll have that context and we'll know, okay, this is John, this is, you know, Lily. Uh, if it's from social media, it and it creates a new ticket because you know they're not offering their email address especially from the very beginning uh probably sienna needs to uh, ask a clarifying question 
uh, to understand exactly who she's speaking with, especially if it's about like an order or something, you know, that is more transactional. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that's great. And Abigail just wants to know how long does it take to start up? How long does it, does it, how long does it start? Okay. How long does it take to set up Sienna <laughs> with a new brand? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we have a, our implementation process that takes around three to four weeks because oh, we break down, you know, the stages. But if you want to build, like literally, you can start today, set up your account in five minutes. You can build automations with the templates and you can go live in like literally minutes. So it's really up to the business on like how they want to move, like what's their knowledge like level of expertise when it comes to working with such solutions so we we have a process that we typically recommend we are very close to our customers especially in the first week we build with them we guide them um but yeah it really depends but it's super user friendly easy to get started also i see another question how long does it take to build trust yeah I so love that. we actually that really have internal notes which this is a feature that allows you to go live without actually having Sienna to go fully autonomous from day one. So it first, it will only leave drafts for the agents as responses. Uh, so the agents can check the, them first and then they will be the ones, okay, these are actually good. You know, I can go ahead and send it to the customer. So it's an intermediate step that really helps us bridge that gap between like, you know, not having AI at all and then having AI as a fully autonomous solution and really helps us build that confidence and trust and makes us ready to go live. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for that. And I'm gonna ask one more question. I know that you did mention um, a little bit of this in the presentation, but I wanted to see if you can expand on it a little bit more. So Kanwar also asked about how good is Sienna when it comes to other languages? If I remember correctly, you, you did mention about if you ask a question in French, it will respond in French. Can, how many languages can Sienna actually be able to speak to their, uh, to the, the customers that are speaking to it? Yeah, yeah. So I was actually doing this uh, example, like just exercise. I was literally asking like an hour ago, bonjour, ça va? And Sienna responded. So it's extremely good at over 100 languages and they are the most popular languages spoken across the globe. Um, so you don't really need to set up anything inside of Sienna. So cheap, you know, is allowed to speak in other languages. Um, if you want, for example, Sienna to use British English versus American English, you can set that up at the, as an instruction at the persona level. So you can do these kind of like little variations. But other than that, you don't really need to do much. Oh, that's amazing. I feel like now I should just go on to Sienna, like any brand that's using Sienna and actually practice other languages. I can like learn another language using this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so we'll, we'll do one more question. And also, Lisa, if you did have a second, when I'm wrapping things up, like please feel free to stay yeah. back. Yeah. I know there's some more questions. Um, but Adrian just wants to know, how does Sienna handle itself if it gave faulty actions or responses? It's a great one. Yes. Uh, so. If Sienna, let's say there's a question that has, that there's a message from a customer that has three questions and then Sienna only answered two out of three. That means Sienna has a knowledge gap. She didn't really know how to answer to the third one. Usually she routes, she just says, oh, regarding this, let me bring this to my colleague or escalate this to my team. Mm -hmm. um, so this is how she would, uh, she would tackle that situation. If it provided a, so there's, if it provided a wrong action, it typically you have the reasoning on why that happened in your Sienna inbox right. um, and you can do adjustments. So the beauty is that every single, um, let's say, thing that we need to troubleshoot or even when it comes like, you know, AI hallucinates, sometimes this happens, you can have, you have a solution for that. So either it's like um, bridging that knowledge gap or like, oh, sorry, filling that knowledge gap with, on what Sienna didn't know yet or optimizing the instructions or the context right. or building more automations or just uploading more data. So it, it, that's the beauty of working with AI. It's, everything has a solution. 
Yeah. And I mean, if you think about even hiring a new, you know, CX personnel, like there are going to be still questions that they don't know how to answer that have they've never come up before, processes they're, they're unsure about. Um, so just like AI, sometimes you just, until it happens, like you don't know what you need to build out, what processes you need to tell them. Um, but it's great the fact that you can very quickly, you know, add those processes in, optimize AI. So then, then those corrections and those actions can be quickly fixed, right? So that's yeah. that's amazing, awesome. Yeah. Well, before we jump off, um, we obviously have the amazing giveaway, that $75 value gift card for Bandit Running Gear. I was actually quickly looking at them. They have a ton of gear yeah, for both men and women and international shipping. So it doesn't matter where you're from. And I, I have to, I mean, this individual has been nothing but amazing and has asked so many questions. Kunwar, thank you so much for being so interactive with all the presentations, especially during Sienna's presentation. Um, you will be getting that $75 gift card to Bandit Running Gear, courtesy of Sienna. So we'll make sure that your information is sent over so that you get that gift card. So thank you again. And please, if you do have time, Lisa, stay back and uh, chat with the rest of the audience. All right, everyone. Well, I mean, that was incredible. Like, thank you again for everyone's participation. But before we do wrap this up, if you did enjoy this webinar, you are not going to want to miss the upcoming events that we have for you. So on August 14th, Trip Whale is hosting our next webinar series where we will share four tips for building a seamless customer journey with our friends from Just Uno, customer, and also loyalty line. So to, to secure your spot, you're going to simply scan this QR code to register for the event. So I'll take a couple seconds so everyone gets their phone out, scan the QR code. If you do have an issue, please let me know. We will also put the link in the chat. And up next, we also have on August 28th, Trip Whale is hosting a webinar that highlights the best Shopify Plus tools that you need to unlock your Black Friday Cyber Monday success. This is another great event that you will not want to miss, especially with the holidays around the corner. I know with this heat wave, it's hard to believe it, but it is, and we got to start strategizing. So you will be joined by our partners and friends from Attentive, Recharge, Search Spring, and Okendo. You won't want to miss what these experts have to say. So once again, secure your spot and scan this QR code to register for the event. I will once again, wait another couple seconds. Make sure you guys got that. And finally, a big thank you to all of you, everyone who attended today's webinar. Your participation is what makes these sessions possible. I cannot express how much we truly appreciate your engagement and also making them just so informative and interactive. And a big congratulations to all of our winners. Thank you again for all of your beautiful questions and comments. Now, if you do have any questions about Trip Whale or even comments about our webinar series, how can we make them better? Please feel free to reach out to me either on LinkedIn or you can shoot me a quick email over at AaronWatt at TripWheel.com. It was absolutely wonderful being your host and I really do look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thank you again, everyone.